Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're at Formnext in Germany. We're taking a look at some of the latest and greatest tech in 3D printing. We're talking with some new partners, some old partners, and we're going to chop this up into lots of different videos so that we can try to cover as much as humanly possible. But first of all, let's play a game of jacket, no jacket, because sometimes I'm going to be hot and sometimes I'm not. And it's going to make it really difficult from an editing perspective. <laughs> Let's get in there. Okay guys, so we are at the Nexa booth. I am with Lewis. Hi. And we are talking Zip. So let's start with, talk about the specs of Zip, build volume and all of that stuff, and then we'll go into what makes Zip special. Yeah, so what makes Zip special is that it's a, our industrial technology just distilled down to the desktop version. So Nexa's patented technology is lubricant sublayer photo curing technology. So any of these inverted SLA processes, you get these really incredible physical forces, or what they call peel forces, as this uh, build plate moves up and down. Yep. If you move at the full speed that technically a printer can, uh, can do, typically this results in some catastrophic build failures, delamination, part separation, etc., which nobody likes. Um, so in order to really think about how do we make a resin process ultra fast, we had to overcome the physics. Yep. We do that through um, our patented membrane called the Everlast membrane that is self-lubricating. So because it's self-lubricating, it easily overcomes those peel forces. You get to leverage the full speed of the process. And you're looking at printing that is anywhere from six to 30 times faster than other desktop printers. Right, so okay. So wicked fast, I think that's kind of the main hallmark. The second is, again, it's industrial distilled down to desktop size. So you're not sacrificing quality, whether that relates to accuracy, detail, build repeatability, or even the construction. This is all billet aluminum here. So are we talking MSLA with extra spicy details, or are we talking are we talking something that really moves away from MSLA completely? Yep, MLSA, so MSLA with spicy details. Spicy Absolutely details, right. right okay. We're doing our version, and, and my completely unobjective opinion, <laughs> I think it's the best. So when we're talking about Zip, we, we can't just talk about it in isolation. So there's that, that, the pro, and we'll come to that in a moment. We've got the ecosystem that comes with it, but then there's the software as well, right? Absolutely. So what we are showing in here, so what we're dealing with here is nesting. So for those at home, nesting is where you take multiple small parts and you fill the entire build volume. So traditionally, if you were filling the build volume of a normal MSLA printer, you would fill the build plate and your Z would just be whatever effectively was left. But what we're dealing with here is nesting. So nesting is where you take multiple parts and you stack them on top of each other to take full advantage of the full build volume. When you're printing as quickly as the zip does, the amount of time you'd be taking the build plate out is a huge amount of downtime, yeah. which then wastes workflow and creates a bunch of Absolutely. manufacturing issues. So what you're doing here is maximizing everything you can get out of the machine all at once. So that is proprietary to your slicer, and there's also some other spicy magic that's thrown into the slicer as well. That means that this printer is pushing out 190 millimeters an hour, which is near enough industry leading across the board. And when you start getting to those areas, you're dealing with very, well, higher micron layers. Yep. You're dealing with normally a speed resin, which yep. is invariably a watered down version of what you had. And you still have to deal with shear forces. So you end up with NFEP or you end up with something ACF film that's supposed to be better. But ultimately you're getting around all of that with, with, with special spiciness that's inside of the, uh, with the spiciness that goes into the, into your film and your release mechanism, right? Absolutely, and the software that backs it. So you mentioned the software is a huge component. You know, anybody can build an MSLA printer. It's how you harness the tool that really matters. Yep. And so that you mentioned the software. So even everything from the slicer, which we're really proud of, um, even Z stacking. So anybody can do this on any printer, but it, takes a 3D printing expert to figure out how to stack and make sure you don't examine yeah. that delamination. We've automated this. It's, it's a simple click of a button, it applies supports, and we've made that super simple. Um, then we've- And that's, that's, a, that's a really important point to make, that technically speaking, you 
could go into Cheaty Box or you could go into a non-proprietary slicer and you could stack your prints to try and make them. But you will spend hours stacking, supporting, stacking, supporting, rinsing and repeating to get a repeatable part that you can then put onto multiple machines and off you go. And then when you need to do the next part, you're doing exactly the same thing again and you're removing the rapid part out of rapid prototyping. When you're dealing, what you're dealing with here is automating the whole stacking process to Absolutely. make it super simple to just fill the build volume, right? Absolutely. And then, you know, we uh, leverage some other software enhancements like what we call um, our adaptive speed control. So think about if you've got really a really thin cross section, it's a lot easier to move super fast. But if you come to a really thick part or a chunky part of, of the geometry you're building and you try to move at that same speed, you are going to run into a few issues no matter what printer you're using. Yeah. So our technology actually reads each layer that you're printing and will control the speed of the printer so that you are always moving as fast as you can yeah. while safely printing your part and ensuring that first time print success. Yeah. And, it's, and it is about that, it's reduction in failure rates, yeah. right? So it's about making the optimum conditions to mean that you can always print. Same as you've got your, um, you've got your own resin refill system in here. Yeah. So um, is, the, does it, is, it, is it heated? Does it, how, is it chamber controlled or anything? Is there temperature control inside of the machine or the vat? Or is it just because the, yeah. because the vat, because the bottle is already integral to the machine, everything's at its own ambient temperature anyway? Yeah, so we typically print at ambient temperature. You're going to get a little bit of heat just from the UV light source, um, but generally, uh, not heating is not required for any of our resins. Okay. Uh, so we have a one and a half kilo cartridge that just sticks down in there. We use a special gravity-fed design to ensure a steady state, so your resin will always stay right here. Right. Between that, and even if you wanted to supplement the vat with an additional kilo of resin, you have two and a half kilos of resin for just continuous printing um, at any time. So again, so gravity-fed systems are they're functionally simpler, so they, they, they literally work on physics. They yes. work, so rather than having to worry about a digital sensor that could fail and then immediately poop out a bunch of resin into your very expensive machine, mm -hmm. it, it literally works on physics. So yes. it's just, it just, work, it just, they generally just work. They're not reliant on huge pumps or anything else. Exactly. It's just suction and physics after that. So that's really cool. So that is Zip, and then we have the ecosystem that comes with Zip. So we have yes. the wash and cure which you guys have had for a while um, and then you have the x cure so the x cure is the new curing system so yes. talk to me a little bit about this because it's very shiny so we've been working on this uh, an ultra fast printer needs an ultra fast curing solution so we really looked at how do we um, harness curing to continue that ultra fast production through the post processing phase you know washing takes two to four minutes depending on what uh, your resin you're using. So we said, let's try and match that from a curing perspective. Let's keep that speed in the, in the workflow going. So while curing for this probably could take 20 to 40 minutes, depending on what resin you're using, and that's respectable curing. I yep. think you'll see that a lot of places. We are now reducing that by as much as 80%. Every single material we own can cure parts in one to 10 minutes, and um, most of them cure in one to five minutes. So you're reducing that right. quite drastically. So from 20 to 40 minutes to one to five. Yeah. And this is the interior. And it also comes incorporated with uh, UV4 at 365, 385, and 405 nanometers. Right. So, uh, so you can that use daylight resins as well as everything else. You can use uh, whether you have a SLA printer, a DLP printer, a yeah. daylight printer, yeah, yeah, yeah. anything. And it'll all fit in here. It comes with custom presets. Um, or you can customize your own curing time down to the time, the power, the exposure, everything. Nice. So, let's take a look at Zip Pro. Let's do it. Okay, so now we have Zip Pro. Have we got smaller or has the printer got larger? It's larger, the printer. This, this is that one, obviously. Um, so, obviously, Zip Pro is scaled up, but it's not just scaled up. We're not just talking about the same printer bigger because Absolutely. when you scale your printer, yeah. you scale your problems. Exactly. We're emphasizing that Pro and the Zip Pro. Yep. So we took um, everything from our previous industrial model, the NXT 400 Pro that we loved about it, everything that we loved about the Zip, and put it together to build the best, most modular, high performance, high throughput printer that we could do. Um, with and keeping the user in mind kind of from beginning to end. So yep. from file prep all the way through to post-processing, uh, that's really where we were honing in on. 
Um, as you can see here, the interior is going to look very similar for the most part. Um, up here at the top, this is going to be our industrial size build plate. So we've actually got a, a build plate locking sensor so you'll know it's locked and it'll be able to tell which build plate has been inserted because we offer yeah. two options, a slotted and a solid. Right. Um, depending on your printing preferences. Got a simple, easy to use billet aluminum structure. So yeah. you don't have to worry about any flimsiness there on the build plate side of things. Oh, it's such a grown up handle as well. Oh, yeah. It's like being in a fighter jet. Brilliant. And we have sensors throughout, most of which you cannot see, unfortunately. <laughs> um, they're hidden that way. But uh, you're looking at everything from monitoring uh, ambient UV to resin temperature to chamber temperature to humidity. And this is where it all becomes important for production. Yes. Because this now is not about making some prototypes for the large part. This is thinking about how do I institute process repeatability whether I have a Zip Pro here in Frankfurt yep. or back home in Ventura, yep. where two very different climates and environments, yep. um, and trying to control the process as much as you can. In addition to that, we've incorporated just a whole host of um, enhancements that I'll, I'll get to in just a minute. Uh, before we do that, I did want to point out, you might notice this entire print is much faster than even the Zip. So we went from 190 mils per hour to 240, this entire print finishes in six minutes. So we can barely finish a conversation before our print is ready. So that, is awesome. let's just touch on that because 240 millimeters an hour is certainly claims that there are other printers that they make, but they compromise a lot to get to that point. Correct. Right? It, is, it is sort of some, some printers will do 100 to 200 millimeters an hour, but that's with special resin. That's with a much, much higher layer height. We're normally yes. talking sort of around the, the two micro, the 0.2 yeah. micron sort of area. Um, and, and what we're dealing with here is 240, mi 240 millimeters an hour, and we're not compromising on that quality or on that consistency. Exactly, you so, can see a beautiful surface finish. We actually chose this, uh, this is our X-Ceramic, which happens to be one of our fastest printing resins, sure. Yeah. But also, look at the detail and look at the application. So this yeah. is what we're talking about not sacrificing on quality, is when if you're doing a 3D printed mold for injection molding, you need premium surface quality, yeah. you cannot sacrifice. And so this is a great example of what you can achieve. So, I mean, again, yes, this, this particular resin is, is, is very fast, but this is a consistent result you can provide across. And as you say, when it comes to manufacturing, it's no longer just about speed, it is consistency and repeatability. I don't just want to get this print off in six minutes and it look like this. I want a hundred of these to come off. Exactly. I want them all to look the same. I want no warpage, I want dimensional accuracy, and I want a high level of workflow, which means that if I wish to, I can change out build plates very easily, and I want all of that cloud controlled. That's a lot of wants, but then there's also <laughs> a lot of money that goes into these machines. These are about return on investment. They're no longer about just price and features. This exactly. isn't a race to the bottom. This is a race to the top of the quality that you can get in the industry. Yes. So that is incredibly cool. So, I mean, we'll just try and give some level of context of what we're talking about regarding the size of this build volume. So this, this vat is absolutely massive. And when you pick it up, you can tell that what you're dealing with is something that's been designed by engineers, not a bucket that's had the handle cut off, which has <laughs> just been the, the case in a number of vats, yeah. in a number of machines. Yeah, absolutely. Um, from top to bottom, this can hold up to 19.5 liters. See, and, and again, back to the software, with stacking, you can take full advantage of that regardless of what you're printing. And with stacking, what we're dealing with is being able to utilize the entire volume for even small parts. So this isn't now, oh, well, I've got a big X and a big Y, so I can print 20 parts at one time. It's now I can print 20 parts in X and Y, and then I can stack those into 10, 15 layers. That's gonna mean I'm gonna be able to utilize that whole print volume when I'm trying, when I'm trying to get that mass manufacturing. This is the difference. This is the change when you shift from the sort of MSLA hobbyist grade machines that we have to professional grade machines. It's the consistency and the workflow. Absolutely. And this print finishes in six hours and that's without optimizing for speed. Print finishes in six hours. This is that's two Lord of the Rings films if you don't watch the extended editions. <laughs> 
like you have to watch the extended edition. you don't have to watch the extended edition <laughs> obviously I can't but watch the yeah. <laughs> right, well, that's brilliant. Thanks so much for showing us this. Yeah. I can't wait until we get one of these at home. We're not going to get one. <laughs> right, thanks very much, man. Thank you. Yeah.